बाबा गीत सुधा मधुरम मधुरम आनंदम साई बाबा गीत सुधा
ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ರಘುವೀರ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರರ ನಧೀರ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ರಘುವೀರ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರರ ನಧೀರ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ರಘುನಾಥ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಜಗನಾಥ Sairam everyone, welcome back to yet another session of Region 10 Inspirational Channel. As you all know, I'm Vijay Shri Venkatraman. I'm your Regional Devotional Coordinator. But before I became this, I, came, I became a part of Dallas Sai Center in 1989. Swami's beautiful bhajans attracted me to his fold to start with. And then I started reading more Swami's literature. And then I got the beautiful privilege of uh, getting Swami's darshan in uh, Whitefield, in um, Kodaikanal, in uh, Madras, which is Chennai, as well as in Puttaparthi, with my family, as well as the Sai family, the Region 10 uh, our regional trips to see Swami two times. Uh, we had the privilege of performing in, in Swami's presence, and got blessings from him. And uh, I have been involved in Dallas Eye Center's activities. Um, I taught Balvika's group four since its inception for about a decade. I get involved with the service projects in our center. And um, most recently, since uh, the last few months, I have been given the honor of serving as the regional devotional coordinator. In this month's meeting, um, we, as you remember, the last inspirational channel, we had the SSC team that had the retreat national retreat at the Sai Premanilliam in Riverside, California. Some of our uh, SSC leaders that went there, they shared their experiences. Uh, in April of this year, there was a national meeting for the regional officers. So from our region, three of us officers were there. Um, and then the YA coordinator, who's also a regional officer, he was there and the national YA representative, he is the leader. He was there as well. So five of us were at this meeting. So we thought we should come and share what a profound experience this was and uh, what an impression it made on us and what were our takeaways so that it can also inspire the listeners and the viewers on this call. Um, so the first thing, that I was so impressed with when I went there it was like walking in and, and, you know, we will all talk about this, about the place, about the people that we met, about the programs about which we learned and so on. It was like walking into Prashanti Nilayam. the calmness, the beauty of the altar. It was really breathtaking. And uh, you will hear more and more about what, what impressed us from each one of us. I'm going to introduce our uh, regional vice president, Mahesh Rege, who is going to first give you an introduction about the place and the program. Then we will all talk about our individual experiences. Brother Mahesh has been a devotee of our beloved Lord for more than 20 years. And he has been actively engaged as a member of the SSS, SSSIO organization 
in several parts of USA. He is currently a member of the Satya Sai Center of South Houston in our region. He has served as an office bearer in the SSSIO organization on the Region 10 team, first as a regional service coordinator from 2017 to 2019, and as a regional vice president since then. So, um, Brother Mahesh, please start us off with uh, our visit to the place. Tell us about the place. Tell us about the program that we all went to attend and also what with, what impressed you the most about the whole visit. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sister Vijayshree, for the kind introduction. Um, I just wanted to uh, start out uh, with a little history uh, that I learned uh, about uh, the Prema Nilayam uh, facility. So the Satya Sai uh, Society of America uh, discovered this lovely uh, property even before the pandemic began. Uh, but I got to know that the deed was actually signed on uh, October 20th, 2021. Uh, that's when the deed was purchased. And uh, somehow it it's it seems to me like it's it's Swami's divine plan because that happens to be um, the uh, Avatar Declaration Day. Uh, so the SSIO uh, members of uh, Southern California um, organized uh, events during the pandemic uh, with uh, social distancing. They did a lot of weekend uh, service projects where the members had an opportunity to clean, to repair, to prepare and nurture this uh, sacred space and also set it up into its current form. And uh, during the course of this hour, we'll see some uh, pictures of uh, what the facility looks like inside and outside. But as the world shrugged off its uh, two year long uh, COVID slumber, uh, the SSIO uh, USA national team uh, gradually opened it up uh, for in-person gatherings, larger in-person meetings. Uh, and we had, I had the opportunity to visit uh, this facility for the first time uh, in April of uh, 2022 uh, for a national uh, meeting. Uh, and only two of us from our region had uh, visited uh, this meeting. Um, and uh, what I was really impressed with is, it is so close to such a large uh, city in USA, uh, but it's uh, really nestled in the middle of a quiet uh, town. Uh, and yet it's surprisingly accessible uh, from any major city in uh, Southern California. Uh, the main hall itself uh, has room uh, to seat about close to about 700 people. And it's got several uh, smaller rooms uh, for service projects, for spiritual gatherings, uh, and to even hold uh, Sai spiritual education classes. Um, and this building is designed to be a home uh, to local, regional, national, and international uh, Sai gatherings. Sai Premanelayam is just destined to host uh, numerous global and interfaith events to spread our dear Lord's message of spirituality, selfless service, and promote practice of the five fundamental human values. Uh, the whole campus itself is about, is close to seven acres. Uh, and I'm sure uh, that this facility will uh, grow and blossom and have even more uh, things on its seven acre land in the years to come. Uh, but upon arrival at this facility, what one experiences, as uh, Sister Vijayshri pointed out, is just a serenity, a sense of peace and calmness. Uh, so the generous building, uh, which happened to be a former meeting place of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, it just greets uh, visitors. 
And once you walk into the main hall, you just feel divine energy um, in that whole um, altar area. And not just there, even in the hallways. Um, so this is really, uh, this was really my first impression uh, of the visit to Premanilaya. Now this year, uh, there was a meeting that was hosted uh, by the national team for all regional officers. And as Sister Vijayshree mentioned, a few officers from our region uh, got to visit uh, the place. So indeed, all of us were left with uh, just awe and inspiration at how beautifully uh, the altar was created, uh, how the facility was set up, and all the arrangements that were made by multiple teams in order to make an event of this magnitude a reality. Uh, so several learnings, uh, several experiences uh, that came out of uh, meeting uh, fellow Sai devotees uh, from across the nation. There were a few uh, from uh, outside of the US as well uh, that attended the conference. And I'm sure during this hour, uh, we will uh, get to hear more uh, from everyone on the call on their individual takeaways, uh, their experiences, and what really inspired them uh, to continue uh, to carry Swami's message uh, in our society. Uh, but what I'd like to do next is introduce one of our regional team members who was also uh, present uh, at this meeting earlier this year, uh, Brother Shiva. Uh, Brother Shiva currently serves as a regional service coordinator. Uh, he's been in this role for over four years now. Uh, Brother Shiva was an alumnus of Balvikas from Hyderabad, India. He participated in cleanup, several constructions uh, like Shivam Extension Building in Hyderabad uh, and Satya Sai Nigamagamam in Hyderabad. He served in the presence of Swami for 15 days at the post office in uh, Prashanti Nilayam. Later for 21 days at a kitchen service to serve students uh, during a summer camp. He also served as the Western canteen lead uh, during the USA group to visit uh, for 10 to 12 days. He has always led a life of service. Uh, he worked at the Ashland Free Medical Clinic uh, every month from 2005 to 2011. And for those of you who don't know, Ashland Free Medical Clinic is a facility in uh, California, which has been uh, open uh, to public for any medical needs. Uh, Shiva also served as the vice president and president of the Austin Sci Center. As a member of the National Disaster Relief Team, Brother Shiva has participated and led many efforts in Louisiana and Texas, helping hurricane victims. Uh, so with that introduction, I'd like to turn it over to Brother Shiva uh, to ask him maybe what inspired him um, from his visit uh, to Prema Nilayam and uh, share his experiences. Brother Shiva. Brother Shiva. Sairam, Sairam Brother Mahesh, um, for that wonderful introduction. I mean, I'm amazed myself <laughs> with the introduction. Thank you. Um, before uh, speaking about some of the service activities, I would like to uh, briefly mention about an incident that has happened um, the night before the conference was to start. Uh, there was an informal uh, dinner gathering for all of us. And uh, in the gathering, uh, we came to know um, about a uh, very touching incident that has happened uh, where 
um we were heard we heard that uh, the there were three or four um people who were helping uh, the construction uh, of the uh, sai premanilayam there was a there was a water leakage and uh, there, so they wanted to uh, you know build that uh, gap so this construction people they they never knew, knew of swami but they were um, i think all the three were from mexico they were speaking in spanish and uh, uh, while they speak they were saying i mean many people got goosebumps but uh, they saw swami walking from the main altar at the um, premanilayam to swami's room there was a room and uh, swami's chair uh, we were all surprised and even um, dr narendranath reddy was saying oh how fortunate they are here we are thinking that we are devotees but there you know they saw swami um, the true uh, the devotees so and then they were explaining about how uh, one got scared um, you know uh, to remove swami's chair because swami was sitting there and he could see and we all could not so um, So, uh, and then also one other person uh, had some ailment and when he heard about this and saw swami and all all his ailments came uh, you know in due course came to a, this thing and he was uh, normal and he was very happy to uh, so all the three shared such a love that they didn't want to move out of the place even after the construction was over basically they said they wanted to be there and uh, they fell in love with swami right there i think uh, they became a true devotees um and then there were some service projects that uh, across there were some discussions in the um in the meeting uh, with all the regions and uh, there were several service projects that other regions had which i like uh, very much i would like to share some of them uh, region 2 had this uh, mental health uh, pilot workshop that was very interesting and uh, they also did the adoption of streets and uh, then we also have um region 5 speak about east program uh, many of you might know about the east but uh, uh, just uh, to recap uh, e eat reasonably a awareness s sleep deeply and e exercise regularly so that was a uh, very nice program conducted by uh, dr rama devi uh, who was also our uh, guest for our retreat um and then region 6 um you know that's amazing they talk about the tiny homes project and how they help build homes for the needy um really a great um inspiring uh, story about their service and uh, they also have um, se- second chance and then region 7 they have several projects that they talked about the vision camp the afmc camp and also the day on the beach uh, program and um region 8 always lucky region for having sai prem nilayam um, all the four uh, service activities uh, that we divide right educate we call it educate socio care medicare or enviro care all of them are at sai prem nilayam um, fully packed with lot of uh, service opportunities 
um and then uh, so and then there were also talk about some public meetings which were inspiring to me um i would i would now like to introduce our brother um, prasanna who is our ya uh, advisor for our region um brother prasanna was a from a family of uh, uh, devotees uh and started singing bhajans at the age of 5 uh and uh, he also had done a lot of uh, learn uh, vedam and uh, uh, several uh, from his young age he had several opportunities to sing bhajans and um he also had an opportunity to attend the Atirudra Mahayagnam in Chennai. Um, he has done several coordination of the, uh, the actual yagna there. And he also taught this Vedam and Rudram to several SSC and YA uh, from Dallas and in our region. And uh, he is currently serving as our uh, YA uh, male representative so without further ado i would like uh, to, to, to ask him to start his, share his experiences before you say because he he talked about service it jogged my memory about what what was really impressive so may i please share what what i had uh, sure. what impression it had on me and uh, if anybody else also has please chime in um he brother shiva is so right so many centers had all these new projects that they talked about i made lots and lots of notes uh, for example region 7 the northern california nevada and uh, uh, that that area of the country they have this beautiful project that they talked about a day at the beach um where they take Uh, they partner with some uh, organization called shared adventures and they go in th- this is an organization that helps differently able children with a field trip so the sai centers they participate with this organization and they go to the beach in the af- one afternoon and they provide for entertainment for some food the music and so on i i said oh that's such a lovely idea and we have lots and lots of lakes right here in texas right so maybe it's something that we can think about and we can try to do even if it's once a year if we do this as a project you know it may be something that that people will enjoy the people that are coming to the um, outing will enjoy and we will enjoy serving them as well that was one thing which i, I wanted to share the other one i wanted to share was uh, in region 9 which is colorado new mexico arizona and utah they do this project called showers of love which was really really very beautiful a lot of us go to um you know uh, uh, help with the tutoring or help resettle the immigrants we go to sometimes to the abuse women shelter and so on and this is something which we can adopt from this this project that i'm about to talk can easily be uh, incorporated into one of those projects that we are already doing um it's called the showers of love basically arranging for baby showers for the migrant mothers that that's what they do um so we can do it in our when we are serving the refugees uh, population or when we go to the abuse women shelter in any one of these areas teen mothers whoever we come across or we go to our homeless shelter where we go to feed people if there is something that we can incorporate where we go you know always bringing in a new life as a big celebration and if we can you know make it special for the mother to be by arranging for a shower um it's something that we bring swami's love to them and the new the baby that's to be born so those are the two things that i wanted to share um, not in the area of service 
but another one that really really i i thought was fantastic effort was from region 2 which is the mid atlantic region which is uh, new jersey pennsylvania uh, delaware maryland and virginia what they do since 2023 is uh, something called sai soul 100 stories of unconditional love that's a weekly podcast audio podcast that's that they've been conducting i thought that was really really very cool because sometimes you know um if they are either seniors who are not driving and not coming to the weekly sai center devotional activities or they're not able to come to the service projects they would still be able to listen to these podcasts and they would feel connected to swami and his message uh so those are the two two or three things that really really touched my heart so i wanted to be able to share that yeah great great sharing actually they were all very inspiring uh, yeah now i would like uh, brother prasanna to share uh, yeah uh, his experiences as well thank you uh, thank you shivana and thank you uh, sister vijayasree um uh, so uh, i think uh, for me uh, there were a couple of things that happened uh, right like i want to touch upon two different things one was some personal experiences that i started having as part of uh, visiting the sai prem lam which is such a beautiful place i think probably each and every speaker who spoke so far has definitely covered about sai prem lam and how pristine and pristine it is compared to our dear prashant lam it's like a prashant lam outside of prashant lam right in, in the usa um uh so we we uh one of the experiences that i had was uh, i actually did visit uh, uh, the meeting with my family uh, so after the meeting was over i did overstay there uh, near in my hotel for actually visiting a few places around um uh, so uh, i i got opportunities to actually do um uh, veda parayanam and suprabhatam in in the in the in the uh, uh, in, in the altar uh, in front of the altar Uh, and also bhajans and and uh, everything so that was really something that was really special to me uh, especially when some of those workers started sharing experiences on how they actually saw our swami in blood and flesh right during those specific times uh, when the suprabhatam was really going on there were um, uh, you know at least three workers have definitely seen swami come out of a room enter the actual main uh, sanctum santorum and be present uh, in both the forms in in our in, in the current sati sai form and as well as in the shady sai form um, so having been able to actually go and sit and do something um, of that sort uh, where i was able to chant the entire suprabhatam and then the veda parayanam right after the early morning hours was really something that i really enjoyed doing um there was also a part where uh, me my wife and my kid we were in inside of a meditation area which is actually a smaller uh, space uh, just actually where the initial altar was put in place uh, so this is a place where uh, there's a there's a picture of swami on the on the right hand corner and towards the left is where uh, you have a, a brief chair of swami uh, uh, and and his paduka is laid out um so we were sitting and meditating and uh, i think people ha- had shared experiences where they physically saw swami in that in that specific uh, uh, space and we were uh, just there and we started experiencing the beautiful smell of vibhuti uh, coming out and i uh, my wife also saw all of a sudden the, the kerchief which was put on the altar started waving uh, as though there was a wind suddenly that came out from nowhere uh, this is a spot where you don't have any winds of course and 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 i was like taken aback for us for a second and then she also pointed out on how the cushion was moving back and forth as though somebody is actually leaning back in the chair and sitting and listening to uh, us um, uh, it was a goosebump moment for us uh, physically seeing something uh, after a long time and i we did experience that divine moment throughout uh, there was also a time where uh, we got to 
um, do uh, more Veda Parayanam. Uh, when, when there was a time where there was actually an eclipse, solar eclipse, I think it was on April 8th or something. Uh, there was a complete solar eclipse. And during the eclipse, we were uh, engaged in chanting Vedam and it was a beautiful experience that I had after a long time for sure. Um, so these are some of the personal experiences. I don't want to take a lot of time about uh, some of the other experiences all of us definitely had. Um, so in as part of the actual retreat, uh, I mean, the, the meeting right there, um, there a couple of things that we, uh, that, that, um, uh, really were inspiring. One was uh, where uh, the ton of initiatives that the IT team uh, was engaged in, one of which was uh, the launch of uh, the Sci 100 journal app. Uh, all of us would have probably heard about the app so far. It's a nice app. Um, I, If you have not really checked out the app, go and check it out. Uh, the link to the app will be uh, shown in the video as well, and you can probably go and check, it, check out the app anytime. This is an app where you can actually journal your progress, just like how you have your journal on, right? Like it's similar to a physical journal. This is an app journal. And and we have launched five different national goals in that app. Um, prominently are the Million Steps, uh, Steps Towards Swami, uh, tree planting initiatives. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, and some of the offices have uh, goals around conducting, uh, you know, uh, public outreach meetings and, and uh, there's also 100 hours of service uh, that you can actually log. Uh, and there is, there's also 100 hours of tutoring that you can log. So the, some of these side tutoring and, and things that we already do, there's a reason why I think uh, it's very important for us to also log our progress and, and, and reflect upon on what we are actually doing um, uh, and, and reflect upon it, uh, right? Uh, it's... It's very important for us to note down the progress just and journal it up. Uh, just like how we, uh, if you if you go back to our Balvikas or uh, the SSC days, it's very important for you to go and note down what you did in a piece of paper, come back and reflect upon it. I think there is a reason behind that initiative and we are trying to go back to that level and see how much of that progress can we really submit at the feet of Swami towards his hundreds uh, uh, in, you know, birthday celebrations coming up uh, in the next year. Um, so, uh, so and there are also other centers who have launched initiatives on this specific app. So, if you have your center and you do have some initiatives that you do and you want to start journaling them, please do reach out. You can reach out to me uh, or reach out to our national IT team. We would be glad to actually go and set the, those up, uh, etc. There are also other initiatives that are coming in pipeline about how we could make the communication better. Uh, how can we streamline them in a way where devotees can better understand what is really going on in, uh, in, in the national, regional and the center uh, levels and how can we actually bring about that coordination much better than what we actually have today. Uh, so those are initiatives that are in pipeline uh, from the national IT team. Uh, so with that, I think I would want to actually pass on to uh, Brother Sriram who really no, needs no introduction, uh, right? Uh, Sri Ram is well known um, uh, uh, amongst uh, all of us in the region. Uh, he served as our uh, regional YA male rep sometime back before I was. I became the regional YA rep. Uh, now he is serving as a national um, Engadal coordinator, male coordinator. Um, Swami entered Sri Ram's life through Balvikas in the middle of uh, his probably the age of seven and subsequently blessed him with good fortune of receiving his darshan while visiting Sundaram and Prashanti Mandir while growing up. Sriram has previously served as a YA coordinator at the Sri Satisai Center of Austin and then as regional YA coordinator for our region, Region 10. And now subsequently, he is currently serving as the national YA male coordinator. As a young adult, he has been actively involved in center service activities and in initiating uh, center go green undertakings such as the Austin Sai Garden Project and participating in YLA community creek cleanups. He also continues to be an active and integral part of the Engadal devotional offerings at his center and in the region. Uh, and besides that, he is also he he kickstart he kickstarting the YA exclusive study circles and organizing the YA workshops and retreats of topics of relevance to Engadals. He is well known for all of uh, the beautiful anecdote that you, he usually shares and all of us are uh, uh, 
know uh, uh, the, the kind of anecdotes he usually shares. The another, another well-received YA uh, regional initiative was uh, uh, actually done by him and it's, it's, it was started as, it started as a monthly YA sharing session titled My Sinai, uh, which captures the YA thoughts and perspective of what it means to experience Swami in their daily lives and how they interpret and conceptualize and incorporate his message. He has also written and acted in place for Swami's birthday at center and the region. And nationally, Sriram is an active contributor and co-lead for the recent offering, the Sai Insider Lens, and participated as a panelist during the series, The Essence of the Vahini, specifically during the episode of Leela Kaivali Vahini. He also leads national group four and YA transition and integration program and the committee, which focuses on ensuring the young uh, incoming YAs from the SSE uh, uh, navigate this transition family truly uh, and feel like they are part of the YA family uh, and, and, and get started with that, with that program. Most importantly, Sri Ram considered his weekly SSE commitments near and dear to him um, as they force him to access and imbibe Swami's message, go back and read them uh, before attempting to communicate uh, it to his group two, senior and group three students. With that, uh, I would pass it on to Sri Ram. Sri Ram, welcome. Jai Sai Ram. Jai yeah, Sai Ram, Prasanna. Uh, that, I guess that was a painfully long introduction for me, but uh, first of all, I want to begin by thanking our dear Bhagwan as well as the Swami and all of you uh, in Region 10 uh, for giving me the chance to, you know, participate in these uh, monthly sessions and, and share what I took away in one sense from that inspiring National Council meeting, right? <clears throat> um, I think you guys have touched upon a lot of wonderful uh, aspects of that meeting in terms of service projects or in terms of other um, devotional slash innovative elements in the podcast. I think similar, similarly for me, there were uh, important things that really struck home, uh, right? Uh, I think, Prasanna, you were talking about um, the IT as well as the app that you've created. Uh, I think, first of all, I want to deeply um, you know, thank you. I think because that is such an important initiative that you have embarked on and actually laid it out for all of us to truly you know, access and use that to good effect um, in our own spiritual journey. So first of all, I want to thank you for that incredible seva. Um, I think in, interestingly, in the area of communication, uh, the meeting had some very useful um, ideas and, and thoughts uh, for us to consider, right? Very importantly, at a personal level, I, I think these concepts which were shared, I think are applicable or relevant in all scenarios, not just size settings, but could be on personal, professional um, settings, anywhere that you interact with anyone. I think very importantly, the meeting stressed as to why we communicate in the first place, right? It's a very interesting question because especially as spiritual seekers, it says uh, silence is the language of the spiritual seeker. Well, if silence is the language of a spiritual seeker, then what is the role of communication, right? That begs the question. And in that regard, <clears throat> it's so beautiful that they conveyed that communication basically is a tool and means to express your love for your fellow beings, as well as show that you truly care. And I think that truly puts into context uh, as to how we should communicate and when should we communicate. Uh, I think that was something that really hit home. Um, you know, knowing when to talk, that itself is a very important aspect. When to open our mouths, when to truly listen, um, how much should we talk and how much should we listen. Uh, if, only when we truly listen can we understand others and then communicate in, in response effectively. So listening is such an important part or the predominant part of communication. Um, I think that really hit home for me um, that especially as someone in this path, how important that is. <clears throat> that, was on, that was one important message. Second important message um, was they 
convey two aspects of conflict resolution which was i felt very very useful in any domain the two c's that they offered as something that we should think upon from a communication angle is the first c of collaboration often times conflicts arise because we don't truly collaborate you know swami says always remember it's not an operation but cooperation so you know often times we are so caught up in trying to get things done and finish the job at hand that we forget that we truly need to collaborate that is collaboration can be sometimes a difficult and slightly messy process because it involves gathering inputs as well as involving people right from the get go from the conception or ideation stage and that can be sometimes be an undertaking in itself but that is something that's very important especially if you want to bring people on board and travel along with you which is what we are all doing as part of this satsang traveling together in one sense so collaboration was one very important um concept that was conveyed and how that should percolate into every aspect of our sai work the other aspect is <clears throat> compromise i think it's they beautifully conveyed this aspect that people often forget what they got and only remember what they didn't get and so that is another important aspect that they uh, conveyed to us which again from a communication aspect was very very useful uh, in any sort of setting so collaboration and compromise and that can only happen when you have truly listened and understood swami always says and you know understanding before adjustment and so that can happen only when we have truly listened in the truest sense of the term so these were some important aspects on communication on the personal uh front that is applicable in any sort of setting and then importantly you know they offered because there's so much of communication going on even within the sai world right there's so many messages we get on through email whatsapp um center meetings so we are all, all we are getting this deluge of information and sometimes we getting lost in that information right so i think this is something that a lot of us would have experienced um even in the sai centers and the sai settings right and i think in that regard um they emphasized what swami had often said and in fact he told professor anil kumar that it is very important to repeat communications as much as we sometimes feel it's an overkill swami ensured that professor anil kumar announced repeatedly a certain uh, element or an offering because it was important for it to stay on on top of people's minds so that they truly one shouldn't say i didn't get the message so that is an important aspect from an organizational standpoint for all of us involved in sai centers and importantly given that there's so much of communication they also offered a tiered structured way of presenting that communication of almost filtering down all that communication into three big blocks one is inspiring communication anything that truly falls under the inspirational section like our session today right and then the second aspect would be informational communications so about something that's upcoming something that uh, people should be aware of uh, in a timely manner so that is the second block after inspiring communication the informational communication segment and finally the third one was action communication something that people need to act upon or really jump on at this point in time so if we can consolidate all levels of communication within our organization even at a regional level and basically break it down into three three blocks of inspiring informational and action uh, that way people have clarity on what they are accessing and the level of urgency and priority of it so i think that was also helpful and finally they also brought up the need to access the eternal companion the eternal companion as you all are aware is a monthly meeting <laughs> that is <clears throat> presented by the international organization the triple sio and it has wonderful messages of swami inspiring sharings by devotees and in fact is a great reference material for any of our say study circles um, or even for any of our uh, offerings at our centers so uh, i think the need to access this beautiful piece of monthly 
inspiring content is the need of the hour and can we make that a part of our uh, you know satsangs was something that was brought up so these were some aspects that really hit home on the communication front and I'll, and i'll just wrap up with a couple of important concepts that they also convey especially one seva that truly uh you know hit home for me was a, a simple seva uh, but again very thoughtful uh, this was from region 6 uh on the pacific northwest um and this is called the second chance project you know swami often talks about uh ceiling on desires well what what if you have already gone ahead and indulged what do you do then i i think that is something that confronts all of us uh, sometimes i'll i'll be frank to admit i have more than what i need at times and there's often times many things at my home that are just sitting idle and is that the case even with you all is there something that we haven't used in a for a significant period of time you could call that 3 months or 6 months is that something that's just lying in your house that could be put to use in someone else's life i think that was a project called the second chance project wherein the yas in one sense would help uh, coordinate this project of banding together you know um, stuff or you know anything that is in people's homes that can be given a second life in one sense in somebody else's life that they they truly need it and i felt that was such a simple but useful way of you know putting so many things that we have in our own homes and lives to proper and good use right and uh, that that i felt was a uh, very very it really struck a chord because swami importantly says on the ceiling of desires all the savings in time energy money or, or food that you have done then should be put to seva it is from those savings in terms of ceiling on our desires that saving should be converted into serving others and i felt this truly conveyed that even if you indulge here was a chance to actually put a ceiling even after having indulged so that was a very a uh, powerful you know uh, one that really hit home the other aspect is this final uh, concept that they talked about and i think it's applicable in any domain uh, because all aspects of the sai world have have this aspect inbuilt into it and something that we probably should look at uh, right and in this regard i'll just quickly share um this uh, uh, you know my ppt um so i'll just quickly just share this concept that they talked about which was called the x plus 1 effect um i think some of you guys may be aware of what this x plus 1 is but it's very important that we all quickly understand and grasp it because it'd be so useful for our own journey right and in this regard <clears throat> uh they talked about this x plus 1 effect uh, to great to great effect in one sense and what is this x plus 1 right interestingly um x refers to wherever we are in say a service project at a center or a devotional offering um or even uh, or or an educare offering within our sai world uh, and this is something that can be again applied to our personal and professional lives x refers to literally where the current status quo is now interestingly you know because swami has given so much importance to the concept of seva of what seva is or what service truly is it is imperative that we constantly are on the lookout for this plus one so what is this plus one right um we are already all of us are good well intentioned individuals who are serving in swami's fold and beyond so what is this plus one that we should be on the lookout for right and this plus one is what is that one small step that i can do up and beyond what i am doing either as an individual or as a collective what can we do that what is that plus one you know in in our journey that we can embark on and I, in that they you know made us think through where can we find this plus one because we it seems like we are all 
hard pressed for time as is we're all you know stretched thin with so many multiple priorities pulling us in so many different directions so then how can we truly find that extra bandwidth within ourselves to do that plus one and here in they conveyed where can we find this plus one be it in our service projects our devotional offerings our educational uh, educare kind of offerings or even in in our refugee projects importantly right they said you can find this plus one amidst any of these aspects for example who is the beneficiary of what we are doing on in any domain there you could probably expand and see is there someone else who could benefit so this plus one could come from who that we are serving or the plus one could come from what are we doing currently can something be extended or something be added on that is simple but makes a difference in terms of what we are doing the plus one could also come from where we are doing it is the location or the spot where we are doing any sort of be it seva or offering will it make a difference if we were to find that ideal space to do it will it bring people together a plus one could come from where we are doing something or it could also come from when we are doing something are we doing it at the right time at the right sort of frequency um when the when the need and the service come together is that happening and most importantly the plus one could actually come from what prasanna was saying why are we doing anything that we are doing it can be even a mental shift that plus one can be from 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 a mental standpoint of why we are doing what we are doing does it kindle a sense of spontaneity and compassion within us when we are doing it that why and of course importantly how we are doing it as a result so you can see that the plus ones in any domain not only seva or service projects as we think in our sai world but also in any sort of domain be it in family life or professional life this plus one of offering that much more in terms of serving the organization or the family can occur from any of these aspects so this is something that they really hit home and i felt this was a concept that really need needed to be conveyed and finally i'll finish with this and say they truly conveyed what seva is for seva swami says there should be the source connection right are you truly connected with whom you're serving right are we connected with the activity that we are doing in one sense if so then it will naturally lead to e the expansion because once we are truly connected we will feel that expansion if we are not if it has become a chore or if it has become a burden then we need to really evaluate whether we are truly connected whether we are truly connected into the source and especially once we feel that sense of expansion what will happen is our vision will broaden we will bring in creativity as well as thoughtfulness into everything that we do our vision will certainly broaden and this will result in us being adaptable as the final day of seva are we true sometimes uh, you know are we stuck in our ways are we caught up in our ways are we not adapting to the to the changing of times and needs this is something for us to evaluate while we are offering anything in any domain so i felt like source connection leading to expansion resulting in the broadening of the vision and enable it, enabling us to adapt would truly help us find that plus one effect that they are talking of the x plus one so with that i'll turn it back to sister vijayashree thank you so much sairam thank you so much rida that was captured so beautifully um you know in addition to all the things that we shared with you um we spent a lot of time on sai 100 activities sai 100 new initiatives that are being planned um so i will open it up to all of you if you would like to talk about uh, any one aspect of anything that touched you maybe i'll start off with saying that um uh, dr narendranath reddy who's the chairperson for the ssio organization 
he uh, talked to us about the 1000 public outreach programs to be done for sai 100 there are 10 regions which means 100 outreach programs in each of the regions is in the next year or year and a half uh, i know sriram said silence is the language of um, uh, you know people spiritual seekers but uh, dr reddy very clearly quoted um, bhagavad gita chapter 18 in which um, Lord Krishna says, no one is more dearer to me than the one who preaches my teachings. So he entreated all of us to go out and spread Swami's message of love to everyone that we know. So that's one of the initiatives. Um, if anybody else has anything to share, please let's open it up and uh, ask for your final thoughts. Um, Brother Mahesh. Do you want to share something? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Thank, thank you. Um, I think the one takeaway uh, for me um, was uh, just creating the awareness mm -hmm. of all of the wonderful and inspiring work that was going on across uh, the United States. And like many of you shared, um, I think there is a great breadth and depth of activities in all of the wings uh, in Swami's organization. Um, but one uh, thing, like Sister Vijayashri mentioned, uh, uh, there's a conscious effort uh, now uh, to do greater outreach and to spread uh, Swami's message in our communities. And this is uh, being done uh, through several channels. And so one of the things uh, we got oriented to was a framework in which we can uh, do public outreach. Um, so it's um, it might sound a little daunting, the word public outreach, but really what it is, is creating little moments where we can spread Swami's message sometimes by just doing our own center activities, but opening them up to the public but maybe modifying the format a little bit so it can help welcome uh, people that are not acquainted with Swami and his teachings. Uh, so that that's just one uh, learning, one, one way of uh, doing outreach. And as we do community outreach work, uh, I think we can look at many avenues through our community outreach work also to maybe consciously spread uh, Swami's values and Swami's teachings. Um, so although this number that Sister Vijayashri mentioned might seem very daunting, how are we going to do tens and hundreds of these? Um, I think we can use our existing avenues uh, through our connections with the community uh, to do greater outreach. And I think uh, there were two other things that uh, maybe I'll share really quickly. Uh, I think at this meeting, it was just an awareness of, for me as to how committed uh, our senior leaders were in uh, doing Swami's work. Uh, mm -hmm. There is just so much of dedication and time commitment. Uh, there are several of our senior leaders who have a calendar that's full of meetings, activities, uh, and uh, outreach events. And that calendar is full from the time they wake up to the time they sleep. And all they're doing is work for Swami. And that was really inspiring uh, for me to see. And uh, one of the things we always talk about is how fortunate we are uh, to be uh, knowing of Swami, being in his organization, having the ability to uh, sing his glory, um, to do work for his organization, as volunteers, as office bearers, whatever it be, uh, we are really honored, privileged. But I think there is always, like Brother Sriram mentioned, the next step. There is an X plus one for each and every one of us, right? And how do we take that individually, continue to inspire each other, and continue uh, to reach out deeper and deeper into the communities we serve. And hopefully, 
we will all play a role in being his instrument in creating a better world and see that happen in front of our eyes. You said so it beautifully, so beautifully. You know, I, that reminds me, when I first came, um, you know, as a young new devotee to this region, um, Dr. Reddy and his wife, they were, um, Dr. Reddy was invited as a speaker for one of our regional retreats. This was in the 90s, 1990s. And uh, we were so impressed, you know, that such a senior devotee who came and he could quote Swami's, um, you know, Swami's teachings from memory. He could quote uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita shlokas from his memory and he could connect them both. It was, I, I, it's still imprinted in my mind. And here, 30 years later, he is still going so strong. And, you know, like you said, he he has meetings with different regions of the world from early morning to late night. And he talked about uh, one of the SAI initiatives, the million miles, a million steps to uh, Swami. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> million steps. And he said, you break it down. I think I can do a couple of million is what he was saying. So leaders, we are so blessed to have leaders like that who inspire us, who through their long-standing service to Swami, not just you know one year or two years, uh, their whole life they've been doing this, just through their example, they inspire us to do in our own way what we can do. So yeah, that's that's really a very beautiful point that you brought up. It resonates with me too. Thank you. What about uh, Shiva and Prasanna? Do you both have any more thoughts that you want to share? Yeah, one one uh, small thing that I definitely want to share, right? Like yeah. and how inspiring it was. Uh, Dr. Reddy uh, shared one uh, one specific note for the officers on how he is actually dealing with this. Uh, apparently, his team and he are meeting every single day. Every single day. <laughs> every single day without any stop, even if he is, he is somewhere else across the globe, even if it, it is all upside down, even if it is COVID, whatever, they make sure to actually go and spend the time every single day, do a touch base and see where they stand, whether or not we are able to uh, deliver Swami's work, etc. I think that is truly inspiring for every officer, mm -hmm. uh, at least for me, to say that it is imperative as officers for us to actually get connected with our folks. It's very important uh, that we go and connect with our, uh, when, when I say outreach, in, in reach is also another very important area, right? Like uh, 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 when in reach is more successful, the, then the outreach becomes extremely more successful because uh, all of us are then inspired first internally and also are equipped with what we could actually go back and actually talk outside in an outside setting, outside uh, in uh, other part of the communities, etc. So that's very important message that I probably got. And of course, all of the regions that doing wonderful work, including our region, uh, at, in various aspects uh, on mm -hmm. how truly each and every service, devotional, SSE, wing activities are impacting folks across their own region and across the globe, etc. And how they are able to even open up, or some of the initiatives are even open up, opened up. For example, the Sai Souls 100, one of those podcasts that you just spoke about is something that's been really inspiring series. I would love all of us to go and check out the series. It's, it's a series of 100 uh, podcast episodes uh, that have been launched and uh, 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 YAs come and share their experiences uh, mm -hmm. about uh, about Swami and, and how uh, and some of those are really really inspiring go and check out I think we will leave the links to you to go and check it out as well uh, with that I will hand it over to the Shiva Ram. Um, um, yeah to sum it up right uh, uh, some of the important points uh, that were spoken to a good leader is uh, you know he makes is the one who makes others feel better, you know, <laughs> very comfortable and um, uh, support uh, the, you know uh, 
the one who supports all the other officers and things like that. So there were several of such anecdotes and uh, one other small uh, point I would like to mention is about the uh, newcomers and uh, orientation um, mm -hmm. topic that uh, was brought in where there were discussions about a lot of act activities including the cultural inclusion and expansion and yes. uh, you know the universality of so, so definitely um, yeah. yes um i should have mentioned it in the beginning of the lecture it's uh, in this session itself in addition to the five of us you know we are blessed to have alex who's the Nash, uh, international vice president at sssio uh, he was one of the presenters, so he talked to us about this framework for um, uh, these newcomer meetings as well as the culture, um, the outreach programs. And his wife Kalika Grana, who leads the uh, SSEHP, um, the Human Values Program, um, she also presented in in the. Uh, meetings as part of the two-day program so they both were part of the uh, participation from the texas or region 10 as well so uh, on and all it was a wonderful meeting i know we are coming up on the hour maybe we exceeded it by a little bit as well but as you can see we had a lot to share we two full days we were making notes all the time uh, it was, you know, a lot of learning, a lot of inspiration for us. So I hope we have conveyed even a fraction of it to you. And uh, if it touched your heart, if you need any further information about any of these programs, you can reach out to any one of us from this call. Um, we'll be happy to share more in detail or we'll get you more details by connecting you with, with the people that are doing it in those different regions and so on. Having said that, I also want to tell you about these next two months. Actually, this fourth quarter is the best quarter. Always. <laughs> because there are so many festivals from all different regions, right? So we, we have lots of celebrations, starting with, you know, Swami's Avatar Purt Day, October 28th is coming up soon. There is a national Seva initiative that's happening on the 19th, which is the Saturday the day before the 20th, which is Sunday. On the Sunday, I'm sure a lot of centers in our region, we are all having special programs uh, to celebrate this milestone. And then come November, we are going to start with Akan Bhajans and, you know, Ladies Day and Swami's birthday and all the celebrations, all the way culminating to um, Hanukkah and, um, you know, Christmas and leading up to the new year. And we also have two um, very, very nice inspirational channel sessions that we are planning, the one in November um, in honor of Swami's 100th birthday initiative that's going to be start that has started recently. Swami's birthday month, we thought of inviting um, uh, Brother Lokesh from North Houston Center to come and talk about the different initiatives and what impact it's had on him by undertaking those initiatives for Sai 100. And then in December, we'll have one of the senior devotees from Austin and San Antonio region who will come and talk about his personal experiences with both the Shady Sai and Sati Sai avatars. So um, please tune in. As you know, it's always happening on the first Wednesday of the month at 8 p.m. We look forward to seeing you all again. Um, in the meantime, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the month. Om Shri Sai Ram will close with Om Shanti. Sister Vijayashri, um, yes. can I just also add one final thing? Please do. You know, you talked about um, these wonderful sessions that are upcoming. I think we can also finish with, uh, uh, you know, a segment or a segment of people that Swami loves a lot, which is the young adults. He says... Yes. He, he, all his hopes rest on the young adults, on the young Turks. Yeah. And in this regard, you know, sister, uh, brother uh, Shiva shared that as leaders, we have a responsibility 
to make others better and to nurture new leaders, right? And in this regard, I think uh, we have all been working on kind of uh, developing uh, Sai, uh, you know, presence on campuses. Uh, and in this regard, in Region 10, we have a couple of campuses which are part of a national pilot program uh, in UT Austin and UT Dallas. Uh, and we have a young adult point of contacts who are amazing leaders who will be coming in the first quarter of next year and be sharing uh, their journey, uh, you know, their story of how they've taken, uh, you know, Sai's message onto campus and how they're living it with their fellow brothers and sisters. Uh, I think that will be very inspiring, something to look forward to. And, and it also help us kind of understand how the new incoming YA from the group four is now not entering into the YA world in a nebulous form, but in actually a, a, a manner that he feels or he or she feels welcome, involved, and successfully transitions as well as integrates uh, into the Sai world and contributes to you know the Sai world. So stay tuned to that. Uh, I guess I think that's one that you guys shouldn't miss. Tyron. So so uh, just to add to that one small uh, area, right? I think Swami always says we we all think Swami is we we keep saying Swami is hundred birthday is coming, hundred birthday is coming. For him, it's just a just a day, uh, right? <laughs> but for us, it's a special day. It, he says that. My birthday is a day when I am actually born in your mind, not, mm. not in my physical form. I think that's 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 something that we should, as officers and as members of this very organization that Swami has built, should imbibe and take a resolution and say how Swami can actually take that birth within us and blossom within ourselves. That's that's uh, uh, that's something wonderful that each of us can do as part of that X plus one factor. Uh, and with that thought, I would I would uh, like to conclude. Wonderful, side. really wonderful. Yes, that's really what we should do to to, uh, to yearn for Swami to be born within our own hearts, and so we can spread and expand that love to everybody else. Okay. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for being part of this today. We'll close with Om Shanti. Uh, Prasanna, do you want to do that? Sure. Thank you. Om Shanti 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 Sai Ram. <laughs>